for today is from uh, the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 8, and it's titled, The New Life in Christ. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in the body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Paul begins, I appeal to you therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Worship. Just think how far we have come in our practice of worship here at Doolin Church. Two and a half years ago, we were in person, 8.30 and 11 a.m. We reached out to people in the Falls Church, Nova area, and the occasional visitor or guest from out of town. Today... We worship in person and live streaming. To worship on Sunday is great. But now if we miss church on Sunday, we have the opportunity to go to our Doolin website and worship 24-7, any day of the week, any time of the day. And our reach now is not only the people in Falls Church area, but to people all over the country, all over the globe. In our worship now, we have beautiful stained glass windows uh, to help us uh, to uh, appreciate and love God. We are paperless. We have online giving. I think the Apostle Paul would approve. Paul, in the lesson from Romans, is telling us that worship is not only on Sunday, but all the days of the week, 24-7, as he says, we are called to embody worship. Say that word with me, embody worship. We use our whole body, our whole mind, our whole strength. We use our entire bodies to worship God, and we take that practice of worship out of the walls, out of our live stream homes, out into the world for the rest of the week. What is worship? Worship literally means worth-ship. To worship is to announce God's worthiness in our lives. And worship is not an exclusive act, but is an act of the whole people of God Worship is the community of faith's participation in the celebration of God's mighty deeds of salvation history. We give thanks for God's actions in the history of creation, the birth, life, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, of Christ's second coming, and the Holy Spirit that is infused in our lives. And this shared participation is theological, it is scriptural, and it is historical. And through worship, we meet God face to face. And it is in this liturgy that we put into words gestures and symbols of how we encounter God. We sing hymns, we pray, we teach, we celebrate the sacraments. And through worship, we are strengthened for ministry to others as we are equipped using the gifts that God gives us 
to go out into the world and serve God and neighbor and not just ourselves. Through our gifts, our message is one of love and peace and justice found in the gospel. And we are called to help others to come and join us as well to be part of our community of faith of Jesus Christ. Embodied worship. Embodied worship is where we express our heart and our mind and soul and strength, not only in worship, but all the places we go, all the things we do, all the decisions we make in life. And in embodied worship, we do not conform to the world, but we are called to be transformed to serve not only ourselves, but to serve God and neighbor. And we are willing to make the personal and financial sacrifices for that to take place. Think of the many ways that we are called to conform in the world. We are bombarded with advertisements of things to buy. Websites, emails, social media, families, friends, organizations, popular opinion, social pressure wants us to stay within the boundaries of tradition. But Paul, Paul wants us to color outside of the lines to discern what the will of God is, to be good and acceptable and perfect. And that can be hard because when we color outside the lines, we don't conform to the norm and we find obstacles along the way. Paul talks about in our gifts that we're called to be humble. He's telling the people of the church at Rome that, you know, some of us have gifts But your gift is no more important than that of your neighbor. All gifts are used together. There is not one gift that is more important. But in the Roman church, there were people that were haughty. They were proud. They said, my gift's more important than yours. And Paul is saying, no, we all work together for the glory of God. St. Francis of Assisi, who I love, and I love to hear what he has to say. He had a letter, it's called Letters to Rulers of People. And listen to what he said. He's writing to to the rulers of his day, and he says this. Keep a clear eye toward life's end. Do not forget your purpose and destiny as God's creature. What you are in God's sight is what you are and nothing more. Remember that when you leave this earth, you can take nothing that you have received. Fading symbols of honor, trappings of power. But only what you have been given. A full heart enriched by honest service, love, sacrifice, and courage. Each of us is given gifts not to keep for ourselves, but to give to the world, church, neighbor, God. Paul writes, For as in one body we have many members one of another, and we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Think about the gifts that we have. I've been given the gift of music, a gift that I cherish very much. I have not been given the gift of live streaming. I have been trained four times how to live stream, and I still don't get it. I just cannot do it. You do not want me there at that booth over there, or there will be nothing for the people to see on the screen. I have the gift of music and arts, but not athletics. I've told this story before. Growing up, I had two older brothers, and they were very athletic, especially in football and baseball. And every summer, we did uh, Little League. And and so I tried uh, the the Little League, and it was just horrible. Uh, Our our team was called the Red Legs. We won our first game and lost everyone after that. I think about when I arrived here at Doolin Church, and there was a, a, a dad who was part of a a Little League team, and he said, Pastor Dave, uh, would you come out and bless um, the opening of our 
of our little league season. And I sure I'd be glad to. So, so I prayed, and then he on this big announcement with all these people around, he said, Now Pastor Dave is gonna throw the first pitch. And and I was I was a nervous wreck. And so I did the best I could, and I was it's one of the most humiliating and embarrassing parts of my life. I'm scarred from it. But I threw that ball and it just went somewhere else. And the poor pitcher, you know, this little kid had to go running for it. It was just bad. I'm not an athlete. Paul gives us examples. Ministering, teaching, generosity, leading, being compassionate. And it is through our gifts working together that we become this community of faith known as Doolin Church. And so now, my friends, as we continue to reopen our building and our ministry and our worship, it's time for us once again think about how we can use our gifts to sustain this community that we know as Doolin Church. The choir, ushers and greeters, counters, leading kids and youth. The live stream team, which is so important. We were talking today. We're going to get, we're going to get t-shirts for these live streamers over there. It's going to have on the back, my gift, and then live streaming on the front. Give it a try. If you're like me, just say, no, I can't do this. Outreach. In September, we're going to have someone from the Falls Church Homeless Shelter speak to us about how we can uh, help persons at the homeless shelter. Uh, Rebuild Together is coming up in October. We had a great ASP. We have ESL classes that will be starting soon. I got a note today that um, uh, there are hurricanes that are starting to, to come uh, to the southern states, and all of those bucket kits, kits are quickly being uh, taken, and so they need to be replenished. And they've asked each United Methodist Church to provide five of these buckets, and these are not little buckets. These are buckets like this. And so we'll be asking people to bring items in and to help uh, to pack these buckets uh, to help people that are impacted by bad weather and storms. Praying. Pray is something that all we can do. Financial giving. Um, all of us. Live streamers. If you can't be here with us, you can support us uh, with your gifts of money and your prayers. I want to share with you to close a poem by Wesley Taylor. Uh, he lives in Oregon, and it goes like this. So listen to this person as he uses his gifts. He says, Lord, if I must sweep the sidewalks or clean the bathroom or wash the dishes or shampoo the dog or empty the garbage or wash the windows or do the laundry or scrub the spot off the carpet or pull up the weeds or anything else I don't want to do, let me do it for the glory of God. Paul is saying to each of us gathered here, make time, take time to use our gifts to serve Doolin Church. And so now, later in this service, we come to the table of Jesus Christ, where we will be strengthened and renewed to practice the gifts of ministry that has been given to each of us. And let us do it all for the glory of God and not for ourselves. And my friends, that is the good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we all say together. Amen. amen. I heard some good amens on that one. That's wonderful.